Welcome to the Reader's Rundown today. We'll discuss the book, Flow, by Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. Mihaly examines the psychology of the ideal experience in his book Flow. He contends that the secret to a contented and joyful existence is flow. Not only are we happy when we're in the zone, but we're also more inventive, productive, and hardy. We'll delve deeper into the idea of flow in this video. We will discuss some of the flow research. Before we dive into more amazing content, join our community by hitting that subscribe button and share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's embark on this exciting journey together. Therefore, we urge you to watch this video through to the end if you're interested in learning more about flow and how it may make your life happier and more rewarding. A businessman by the name of David used to put in a lot of effort throughout the day and night to advance his enterprise. Additionally, he had greatly increased business success, and all he needed to be happy. A state of consciousness known as flow is what distinguishes an experience from being truly an experience. According to research on the optimal experience conducted by the great psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, people frequently experience joy, creativity, and a sense of connection to life when they are in flow. We shall discover how David found joy and satisfaction in this video. We will break up this book into 10 chapters so that you can better understand it. So let's get started. Chapter 1 The Path to Happiness explores the experience of happiness and its impact on living a fulfilling life. Happiness is achieved through a state of sublimation called flow where one is adaptive to challenges and loses control over their sense of self and time. Achieving flow involves targeting and quick response, which can create alignment with work, increase self-worth, and find meaning in life. Happiness does not come by seeking it, but rather by how we perceive its effects. During moments of optimal experience or flow, happiness, satisfaction, and supply have even more positive long-term effects on our lives. Chapter 2, The Physical Composition of Humans, discusses the physical composition of human consciousness, focusing on the importance of understanding the machinery inside and controlling our thoughts and feelings. The author suggests that those who can take advantage of discomfort to gain control over consciousness are happier. Humans have evolved consciousness points, allowing them to distinguish between stimulus and response, use their senses for various purposes, and make decisions about their lives. Over their lifetime, 185 million units of information are collected, which are sent to the mind through mental energy. To benefit from this information, individuals should focus on their goals and avoid external distractions. Chapter 3 Happiness Quality of Life The author emphasizes that true happiness is distinct from superficial appearances and fleeting pleasures. They highlight the difference between happiness and fun noting that happiness stems from enhancing one's experiences and environment. While fun meets immediate needs, happiness involves challenge and growth. Many seek instant gratification, but choosing the path of least resistance can lead to harmful habits. Enjoyable activities require initial effort and skill development, ultimately leading to valuable rewards. The author also discusses achieving flow through focused attention, clear goals, control, and a sense of partnership, which enhances the perception of time. Chapter 4, Finding Flow The concept of flow and its connection to happiness. It discusses activities that often induce flow, such as sports, art, and hobbies, which push individuals to challenge their limits. The example of an antique shop owner in Italy is used to illustrate how engaging in tasks that are neither too easy nor too difficult can sharpen one's skills. The chapter emphasizes the balance between challenge and skill, personal goals, and passions to achieve improvement. It also highlights the story of potter Eva Ziesel, who managed to enhance her skills and imagination even in challenging circumstances suggesting that mastering one's environment and finding internal rewards can counter contemporary fears and anxieties. Chapter 5, Flow in the Body This chapter delves into the importance of incorporating the body's potential for improving quality of life. Neglecting physical skills results in decreased bodily functions and awareness. 
The chapter encourages heightened sensory experiences like observing surroundings during walks and deeply connecting with the music. It suggests practicing mindfulness through activities such as yoga, emphasizing self-mastery and control over the mind. Chapter 6, Flow of Thought Flow of Thought highlights mental experiences, stating that uplifting moments often originate from mental engagement and focused thinking. Reading, problem-solving, and creative pursuits induce flow in thoughts, leading to improved concentration and enhanced performance. The chapter underlines the challenge of maintaining focus and introduces flow as a method for achieving a structured mental state. Chapter 7, Working with Flow Work doesn't have to be overwhelming. It can provide a flow experience when infused with goal-setting, feedback, mastery, and challenge. Many skilled jobs offer this flow potential, but people often miss it due to preconceptions and a lack of immersion. Examples of Italian Alps villagers and a curious welder illustrate that a state of flow can be achieved by integrating work with challenges, learning, and a focused mindset, leading to increased confidence and satisfaction in tasks. Chapter 8, Taking People's Happiness External factors like heavy traffic and busy offices encroach on personal space, necessitating support systems. Alone time aids focus but can lead to boredom, so relationships with family, friends, and neighbors become crucial. Positive family dynamics, supportive friends, and active community involvement contribute to emotional nourishment, happiness, growth, and unexpected results, fostering connections and self-improvement. Chapter 9 playing with challenges. This chapter underscores the need for a healthy competition mechanism to foster flow. Internal and external sources of motivation can drive achievement, emphasizing the importance of transforming adversity into flow conditions. The autotelic self, characterized by balanced thinking and engagement, is central to mastering flow. A model for converting challenges into opportunities involves setting clear goals full immersion in activities, mindful attention, and enjoying immediate experiences. Overcoming setbacks requires letting go of ego, having faith in one's abilities, and finding new solutions. Through these principles, one can cultivate the habit of living a scientifically oriented, determined life, even when facing challenges. Chapter 10, The Meaning of Life. The final chapter underscores the significance of synthesizing experiences into a meaningful life purpose. Setting challenging goals, working with determination, and finding a balance between dreams and desires is crucial for a purposeful life. Malcolm X's transformation from adversity to social work exemplifies this concept. The chapter emphasizes that without specific goals and desires, achieving remarkable feats or finding the true meaning of life becomes improbable. Ultimately, setting and achieving meaningful goals lead to genuine happiness and the flow of life. Conclusion. Let us learn. Let's repeat the lessons learned once. Utilize the power of flow to attain genuine happiness. Incorporate activities that challenge your understanding and enhance personal growth. Embrace tasks initially disliked for authentic happiness and self-improvement. I greatly appreciate your time. There's an incredibly captivating book video waiting for you on the screen. See you soon. Thank you so much.